Welcome to lecture three, what is polymorphism? In the last lecture, we looked at inheritance, and I told you that inheritance really gives us two cool features. First, it helps us with code reuse, and we briefly looked at that. But second, I told you that inheritance enable us to use polymorphism. Now polymorphism is broken into two main topics. So here is the definition from Microsoft's website on their developer network. You can see this is the polymorphism page and there's two bullets. First, it says at runtime, objects of a derived class may be treated as objects of a base class in places such as method parameters and collections of arrays. We're going to be able to see what exactly that means in this lecture. Now there's another definition or another part of the definition saying base classes may define and implement virtual methods and derived classes can override them, which means they provide their own definition and own implementation. So we'll look at that in more detail in a later lecture, but we will cover both of these topics. All right, so let's look at the first bullet. So from the last lecture, we had the person class, which is just two properties defining some basic characteristics of a person. We also have an employee that derives from person and it adds on top of the existing person properties, um, an ID property as well, and a method that says introduce self. Now we're gonna add another class. Uh, we'll call this class a student. Student will also derive from person. So a student is a person. And a student on top of a person will have, I don't know, let's say a grade level. You know, like first grade, second grade, etc because of students have. So now we have a student, a person, and an employee. So the, the main bullet of polymorphism is being able to use a derived type as if it was a base type. A very common situation is in collections because in the real world, what happens where when you want to create some type of list or array, that can hold on to references of multiple types. Let me give you an example. If I were to create a list of employee or a typical array, doesn't really matter, and I want to be able to store employees in it, it's very simple. I can just say emps.add new employee, right? That works just fine. But this list can only work with employees. If I try to say emps.add new student, this isn't going to work because a student isn't an employee. So based off of polymorphism, it states that I can make this a list of person instead. And by having this a list as per of person, I can store references to employees and students because employees and students are also people. Now, this is where things can get a little tricky. This is a list of people or a list of person, but it really is storing employees and students, which are more specific types of person. This can lead to some problems. For example, if I create a person variable and I point it to a new employee, this works just fine because a person is of type person and an employee derives from person. So I can store a reference of an employee into a variable of person according to polymorphism. That's what that first bullet says. However, if you were to say p dot and you look at the IntelliSense, notice how it only displays age and name. I no longer have an introduce self method or an ID property. And the reason is, is because I have a variable of person. So I'm looking at the employee through the eyes of a person. I know that behind the scenes, yes, it really is an employee. In memory, I allocated room on the heap for an employee. But 
I'm storing that in a variable of person so I can only see the person specific things. So you may be wondering, well, what is the point of this? What is the point of storing a collection of person? And the whole benefit of that is that I can have employees, students, and anyone that derives from person inside that list. But what's the point of that if I can't even access those properties or, and methods that are specific to those derived classes? There, there really is no point. Um, so it turns out that you can actually get at the derived types. So I mean, I'll show you a couple of ways, but notice that this is an employee, it's just stored in a person variable. So I have to cast it or convert it back into an employee. One way that you can do that is I could say, let's treat, let's make a new temporary variable for employee and we'll treat the person variable as if it was an employee. So this is saying, take whatever this is and let's now treat it as if it was an employee. Now that I do that, I can now access the employee specific things again. So there is the ID and the introduced self methods. Now one gotcha with as is that if the conversion is not successful, it returns null. So it's, it's very um, common to see um, people write code like this. If E is not equal to null, then access the E specific things. Now there also is an is keyword that I wanna show you as well. But all of this code is really common to see in lists or collections. So let's do like a more real example. So let's pretend we have a student. We'll say the student's name is Jesse. The student's age is, I don't know, um, 15. And the student's grade level, I don't know what grade that is. Let's say eight. Oops. So we have a student. Let's also create an employee. So we'll say e dot name equals Bob, e dot age equals um, 50, uh, e dot ID equals some kind of identification. Okay, now let's take our student and our employee and let's add them to our list of person. So we'll say emps dot, even though emps is a bad name, we'll go along with it, add s emps dot add E, right? So now they're stored in our list. Next, let's go ahead and loop over this. We could use a for loop. I'm going to use a for each loop. So I'm going to say for each person P in EMPS, I want to, for a student, print the grade level and for an employee, print the ID. But there's a problem, right? If I had to just say console.writeline p dot, notice how grade level and ID do not show up. That's because I'm looking at potentially a student and an employee through the eyes of a person, so I can't see them. So I have to use a cast or have to do a cast. Um, I'm gonna show you another keyword called the is keyword. The is keyword allows you to check to see if something is actually another type. So I could say, if P is really behind the scenes a student, if P is really a student, then let's convert it. So we'll say student temp equals P as a student. Now that I have that whoever it is as a student, I can now say const.writeline temp.gradeLevel, right? I'll then say else if P is an employee, that's the case, we'll say employee temp equals P as an employee, const.writeline temp.id, right? I can access the ID in this if statement because temp will be an employee, and I can access grade level in this one because it will be a student. But if you take this all together, we have a list of person. This could have hundreds of students, hundreds of employees, hundreds of other things that derive from person. And in our loop, we're just saying, 
you know, what are you really behind the scenes? Whatever you are, let's do a cast and then we can access those specific things. This is really all polymorphism. This is polymorphism. The fact that we can add students and employees to the list is polymorphism, or at least one aspect of it. So if I run this now, you can see when we get through the list, for the student, it prints his grade level, and for the employee, it prints his ID. 